when he said uh, to you, did, I, I presume, I don't know what his words were, I'm, I'm, he communicated in some fashion that he's thinking about running for president. What did you say to him? Did you? Well, when we first talked about it, we both said, you know, he, you know, we weren't sure if it was the timing or everything like this. But then when we were talking at the end, you know, I put my arm around him and we were walking arm in arm and I said, now's the time, let's go, because we're ready. I mean, if I might, I have another question, but I'm going to let Jeff Berkowitz have a word here. Now yeah. that's tough, Joe. No, that's tough. <laughs> but you were in the Senate, as you say, with Senator Obama, then State Senator Obama. Right. I think he cast about 4,000 votes. Team Clinton, Hillary Clinton, has been raising the issue of the 130 present votes he cast. What they say, when you come to the U.S. Senate, you got to vote yes or no. You can't vote present. They're pretty critical of those present votes. What would you say in defense of Senator Obama to Hillary Clinton about those present votes? Well, first of all, I would I would count the number of votes you take in the U.S. Senate compared to the number of votes that we take in the, in the state Senate, and they probably take, what, five votes a year maybe or something like that? I mean, they don't, and I'm a, kind of exaggerating, but they don't take near the amount of votes we do. And when we take votes, we're taking them, what, 20? I mean, there's been days we've taken 150 votes in one day. Okay, so that's a little bit different than the amount of votes they do. They take a vote, they've got, what, a half hour to cast their vote? I mean, it's a different procedure, completely different than what we do. And a present vote is, they don't even have the option of voting present in the U.S. Senate. They've got to vote yes or no. Well, that's it. Was he dodging some issues no, when he voted no, present? No, because on the same, and, and one particular issue that they're talking about, was a you know a setup situation that a, a present vote was the same as a no vote, but there were a lot of times that there were particular things in the piece of legislation that we were for, but had to be corrected before we would vote yes, and I was one of those present votes on some of those issues alone because we sat right next to one another, we would confer with one another, and we would do these things. I mean I'm pro-choice. I don't hide the fact. Senator Obama's pro-choice doesn't hide the fact, but it doesn't mean that if it's not a clear-cut bill and it's not the way you really exactly want it, that you're going to vote for it. You may vote present until that bill is corrected to the way you want it, and you tell the sponsor, correct it, then we'll vote yes. But you're not going to say I'm voting no because you don't want to go on record to be a no against a bill that is helpful to you know women's rights. One, one other quick thing. You mentioned Senator Obama com campaigning in Idaho, somewhat different country from Illinois in terms of guns, right. and he said there he's for the Second Amendment. Well, yeah. But, but, and Howard Wolfson, communications director for Hillary Clinton, said uh, recently, he said, well, maybe he said that in Idaho about being for the Second Amendment, but he didn't tell the people in Idaho he was also for limiting the number of gun purchases to one a month. Do you see any inconsistency there? Would you, what would you say to Howard Wilson, communications director for Hillary Clinton, about all that? I would say you have to look at Illinois laws, look at a lot of everything. I'm for a second right amendment. I don't see a, a law-abiding citizen should have the right to bear arms and have the, you know, if they want to go hunting, they want to go skeet shooting and all of that. So you're a second amendment guy? No, I'm, I'm, I'm anti-guns. But are you in favor of the Second Amendment? I'm in favor of the Second Amendment. I don't want to change the amendments of the law, you know, the country. But the point is, I want law-abiding citizens. I don't think that we should have guns just running rapid. I don't think Jeff Berkowitz should go out and buy 20, 30 guns a month. I don't think you need them. I don't think. I don't even own a gun. I, neither do I. And I don't think you need them for hunting. I don't think you need them for skeet shooting. And I think any, you know sound person would if you're going hunting you know you're going hunting three days ahead of time so there's no reason to have not have a three-day waiting period and all of those types of laws should be in effect but it doesn't mean you're against uh, you know second rights bare arm all right one, one last thing just give okay, us a, give us a sentence on what is the magic of barack obama as, as you see it give us just put it down in one sentence i think i think that the, the sincerity of the individual, and like I've said to people, when you know them like I know them, you, you can't help but like them. And the point is, it's the sincerity of an individual that in politics, you look at people that the spin doctors get a hold of, they twist, they, you know, they say, okay, Barack's an attractive guy, he's, you know, tall, 
uh, speaks well and stuff like that, and they try to change the image, and they'll say, you say this, you do this. Well, this isn't what Barack's been doing. Barack's been Barack from day one. So sincerity, sincerity, credibility. Sincerity and credibility is what they want, and that's what they want in a president, they want in an elected official, no matter who it is or what office you're running for. What are your thoughts here on Super Tuesday as Senator Obama is on the road to the White House, and is he, let's just start off with, is he doing as you expected, or has he uh, done maybe better than you expected? Well, I think the better you know him, the more you expected from him. Uh, in light of that, I think he's doing just what we expected, which is to take a message out there that substantively people can get their arms around, and from an emotional standpoint, they can bring an optimism and hope that you haven't seen in politics in a long time. How well uh, do you know the senator? Uh, you've worked with him on the Senate floor. Well, I was privileged to come into the General Assembly with him uh, back in 1996. And together we worked on a number of things, including the Illinois Ethics Act, which he shepherded through the Illinois Senate. I worked on in the House. Uh, and, you know, it was clear early on that, you know, we were seeing something special. And it's great to see something like this happen and see it all come to fruition. It really is. When you say you saw early on, tell us, tell the viewers who obviously haven't had a chance to know him, what is it about him that stands out when you say you saw something special? Well, it's funny. As recently as this morning, I had friends calling me from New York and from other areas asking me, you know, my thoughts on the campaign. And, you know, what I told them is what I'll say now is, you know, what you see in him today is what you saw in him 10 years ago. There's a sincerity. There's an earnestness, uh, real honesty about the passion that he has for what he's trying to do. And it's one thing to have good ideas. It's another thing to be able to take those ideas translate them into action, and also coalesce a crowd around you. Uh, so he's been able to do that on a statewide stage, a national stage, and truly an international stage. And it's almost uh, one year ago, February 10th, it'll be a year ago that he announced on that cold day in Springfield. Uh, how have you spent the last year? Have you been engaged in the campaign at all? I've been doing work on the local level. I've been making calls out to elected officials uh, throughout the Midwest, out on the East Coast, and just trying to spread the message uh, from those of us that know him on a first-hand basis to say that, you know, what you see with this guy is what you get, and the more you see, the more you're going to like it. And I think that the reaction, as the primary has gone, gone along, has shown just that. Elliot Hartstein, the village president of Buffalo Grove, thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel. Happy to be here. Uh, as we gather here, you're part of the crowd to hear Senator Obama on what is Super Tuesday. Tell us, tell us why you're here and your involvement with the senator's campaign. Well, I've been involved from the outset uh, in terms of uh, supporting the senator. I've had a chance to go to Iowa actually fi five times. I was there for the caucus. That was probably one of the most exciting political nights I can ever remember. But most exciting was being in the, in the caucus itself. Uh, that was quite an experience to see how it works and see that process. And everybody in Iowa really got to kick the tires and see Senator Obama. And I think that's why he did so well in Iowa, because everybody saw him up close uh, and really knew what Senator Obama was all about. I personally support Senator Obama because he's the type of person who can really unify our nation. He can bring us together to get things done. Uh, he did it in Springfield by getting to people to work together on both sides of the aisle uh, to get results on kids' care and other things like that here in Illinois. Uh, and I'm confident he's going to be able to do that same type of thing if we get to Washington. So I'm very excited tonight. Uh, I hope we're going to get some very exciting results. I know this is a big day across the nation, but I know it's going to be a big day and an exciting day here in Illinois.